team that you expected earlier in the season. It was never a dream of mine to win 800 games, but it was a dream of mine to coach guys like this. People come to the ACC tournament to see the stories unfold. Some are lifelong fans. Some have an even deeper history. My parents went to Carolina, so we grew up. ACC was, was it. I've always wanted to play in the ACC, and State has given me the opportunity to play, you know, against Carolina two times a year. We're Carolina fans, because we're Grew up Carolina family, and my husband, obviously my husband and I both went to Carolina, but we're state basketball fans. I don't think it ever was house divided, you know, because my parents are so supportive, and my brother is so supportive, and I even, like, when Miles decided to go to Carolina, like, it was never like, oh, you should have came to state. It was always so proud of you, and I'm um, so, you know, encouraging. To have them play in the conference that their dad played in, that's special to me. And anytime your kid has a dream to come true, you're just really excited for them. It's like a dream come true. And to see him out there uh, go through the, the gauntlet, snapping high fives and doing all that stuff, and I'm like, wow. It just makes me feel good, man. It makes me feel very warm. Even though the guys go to different schools, one goes with blue, one goes with red, it doesn't matter because we're all family. We started out as family, and in the end, we will still be family. So we're gonna support one another no matter what the situation. My mom made a statement and she was like, I think, I thought State, you know, was a really good choice for you because State's always the underdog and you've been an underdog your whole life. So I, that kind of stuck with me too. And I was like, yo, State, you know, might be perfect for my personality and, you know, the chip that I have on my shoulder because State has to play with that chip because, you know, we're in the shadow sometimes of Carolinas and the Dukes of the world. Side of Boo on the baseline, squares up against Thomas. Throws a baseline jumper over top of it. Kim Dahl is out. East side rebound, Blossom Game, who races up the middle of the floor himself. Brings it left side, Jerron Blossom Game. Stutter step, attacks, floater, good. Jerron Blossom Game with a pro move, grabbing a rebound on one end, racing up the floor and scoring it himself on the other, and a 6 5 lead for Clemson. An early deficit is frustrating, but won't deter the Wolfpack and Torin Dorn. His family won't let him surrender. He will take on the best that Clemson has and fight to the limits of his endurance. Dorns. 
screen to his left, Henderson dribbles over to the left wing, shoots a three over. Bottom, bottom. Yeah! Let's go, Matt Defense! Screen to his left, JB, fadeaway three, swish! Blossom Games got 14, that's his first three-pointer in the ACC tournament this year, and the Tigers have their largest lead of the game. It's tough, so it's tough for me right now. But my overall uh, memories are going to be amazing. They're going to be fantastic, and we've had a lot of unbelievable things happen here. Collins, 12 feet away. A jab step on Jeffers. They double him. Now Collins gets doubled right of the key. Swing it left. Open three. Crawford good. 14 point away. Forest lead. Largest of the day. This is hard for the BC players. At the end of every season, you feel the same way. You know, you, you're saying goodbye to some kids that, that, you, that mean a great deal to you. And a lot of people don't understand whether you win or whether you lose. These guys are very, very close and care about each other a great deal. And, you know, unfortunately, uh, we had to lose. Somebody's got to lose this tournament. We got knocked out. You know, anytime you play in a tournament, you want to survive and advance, and we're able to do that. We're just trying to create our own momentum. You know, we've been very fortunate the last few games that we played. We put ourselves in a situation to have some success, but that needs to continue. Congratulations. Thanks, man. I'm so yeah. proud of you. Thank you. Who knew on December yes. 31st? Tell me about it. Hey, we'll yeah, that, that, that might have been the greatest upset in the history of the ACC. At that time, at that time. When I got the job, they told me this was going to be a startup company. This was going to be a major rebuild job. They were blowing the whole thing up and starting from ground zero. My bosses had said, there's a good chance you're not going to win an ACC game your first year. You're probably not going to win 20 games overall your first two years total. The national media had said, we're not going to win a game in the ACC. I had to wrap my mind around that and say, what we need to do is just focus on the long term, take it one day at a time, and, and set the foundation for what we want to do maybe in year three and four. Well, North Carolina has never lost in the Cambridge Pavilion. And the last time Georgia Tech beat North Carolina, period, was in 2011. This is going to be one of the more shocking results of the basketball series. No one saw this coming. Caster's team with the upset of the year in the ACC. I remember texting some people at the league office. Can you send me the plaque of the standings where it stands right now? Because we are in first place in the ACC at 1-0. and He's probably one of the best coaches I've ever had, personally. And it's not so much the X and O or, like, running a play for me, you know? It's more like how he manages the team. If you're not flying there, then we're, we're not going to be able to guard anybody. You understand? You've got to take pride in that. He's very straightforward with you. He lets you know that this is what he wants you to do. And there's nothing you really can say because he seems to be able to pinpoint things really well. You don't play with pace, you're just not good enough. If you screw up in execution, we're not winning. That's as simple as I can be. It's a difference between being this way or this way. Just do it right. He's just so straightforward, and it really helps athletes play. You're in a, you're in a pro if you play with explosion. If you don't, then you're not. Details. Come on, you want, I want you to be a great player. Move it, turn it, cut! There you go, Todrick. Good job. In my wildest dreams, I wouldn't have seen this coming. It's like a modern miracle. I got to see it firsthand how individuals came together as a team and bought in. The name on the front of the jersey was bigger than anything else. When five guys come together as a unit and they're positive with positive energy, anything can happen. The Yellow Jackets enter the tournament as the 11th seed, but they beat the top three seeds in the ACC this season, and Pastner was named Coach of the Year. by Todd Jackson. Jackson drives, lays it up and in. No 
Stolen pass inside. Reverse count block. Jones oh. erased at the rim by Lammers. He stopped over the top. To down low to Lammers. Point five. Key. Blocked by Mark Young. Box is shot. Georgia Tech knows they can win, but Pastner sees problems that must be addressed. Hey, listen, 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 listen. Now, this is important. We do more point shooting. So we want to eliminate as many bounces as we can. It's too slow. The speed, boom, boom, move it. Quick, 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 move the ball. Everything's about team. Team, team, here we go. Team on three, one, two, three, team. Three. This team can win if they create better chances and take better shots. Yellow Jackets take the lead in the second half, but their head coach is worried. Maybe they peak too soon. Hey, hey! Get to your spots. Speed, speed, Condry. Jack crossover down the lane, running one hander is up and good. Let's play some basketball. Let's draw that lot in the sand, folks. yet for the Yellow Jackets. Are you guys fouling? Huh? Are you fouling? Uh, no. Okay. Even if he makes it, I thought he still might. The Panthers trying to hold on for dear life. Oh, man. Just one more. After this one, if he makes it, you can light your cigar. Cameron Johnson, the sophomore at the line. Here's his bonus attempt. It's no good. The rebound. Four seconds, three seconds, and there's a foul. I feel a little numb in a way just because I feel like our guys left it all out there. I know I did too. Yeah, we made our mistakes. I mean, with the last game, I think that was our, our deciding factor on whether or not we got to the NCAA tournament. I wanted to win so bad for our guys. I felt you probably need to win two more to get in the NCAA tournament. But to get to play the next game, you had to win this one. They have given us every ounce of effort that they've had. And I wanted to win for them. I guess emotionally, I'm more grateful. Just, I mean, for my guys. Like, no one expected anything out of us. I know that what we did this year matters. We left Georgia Tech a place where guys want to come play, and people want to come watch us play. That's something I take pride in. One journey began over 1,200 miles away in Miami, Florida. But for many hurricanes, it's homecoming. Off the catch. The conference tournament is moving to Brooklyn, back in New York City, where so many great college games have been played. It's going to be a homecoming for me, a homecoming for Kamari Murphy, who grew up in Brooklyn. Being able to bring him back in his fifth and final year is tremendous. I haven't played in Brooklyn since I got to college, so to go back my final year is, is going to be a dream come true. The location of this year's ACC tournament attracts a lot of fans in Orange. Let's go, Cuse. You like that? Woo! Oh, yeah. It is round one for the University of Miami at the ACC tournament. It's the Hurricanes and the Orange of Syracuse. The granddaddy of all the postseason basketball tournaments. Adrian Autry is a walk-on for the Orange. 
He almost walked away from basketball when he began college. But Adrian Autry Sr. was a star player for Syracuse and is now an assistant coach. Family means everything. When you get into college basketball, and especially if you've, you know, you played at this level, it's always nice to come back to kind of what you call home. Coach Beheim, playing for him, and even working for him, it's, uh, it's, it's been an unbelievable experience. Just, you know, picking up on things and just watching them and observing the way he handles things. And you, you can learn, a, you know, a lot, you know, from him. And I, I have learned a lot. Um, but it's, it's, you know, sometimes it's kind of surreal, you know, to, you know, to think that, I'm, that I played for him 20 plus years ago and now I'm back working for him. Most of the time I walk around and they say, oh, Adrian Andre, they see my name. Your dad was a great player. I'm like, huh. Yeah, I'm not that great of a player, but I'm a good dude. <laughs> he gets the perks of, uh, you know, people being familiar with the name and him being around, but uh, also he always has to be on his best behavior. I'm the guy that's always bringing energy to practice, bringing energy to the games. I'm, not, I'm the guy that's always clapping, cheering people up. Syracuse basketball is just, it's a culture, you know, and I'm glad to be a part of it. And away we go. Opening tap is won by the University of Miami. Newton is in the middle of that zone. He's got it. Newton bounce pass to Murphy for a slam dunk. And that was perfectly executed. Covered up by Murphy. Over to Gillen, waiting for him is Brown. Back to Lighton on the baseline, goes up for a slam dunk. It's blocked. What a block by Azundu. Syracuse and coach Jim Behan keep up the pressure. And in the second half, they take the lead. Most games like this come down to who made the last couple shots. Battle for three, good! Syracuse has the lead. We got it down, we got a one point lead. And sometimes games like this, that's how the game turns. You're in a battle, are you gonna fight or not fight? I want to see someone who's competing hard, not giving them wide open three. Battle. Push wax his way into the paint. Oh, he missed a slam dunk. The ball ricochets all the way out to half court. Retreat oh. by Newton. Newton on the drive, down low. Murphy slams it home. Oh. Miami 62, Syracuse 57. And Miami moves on to the next round. Behind Kamari Murphy's 16 points. I didn't want to get overly hyped because I'm in Brooklyn. So, you know, I kind of just play my game. Um, my teammates helped me uh, have a successful game today. I'm glad we got the win. That's what we do, man. That's what we do, man. It's always tough to lose in a tournament like this. At the end of the game, we actually missed a dunk, and then we missed two threes. Those plays uh, were probably the difference in the game. As the 12-5 game is about to commence, it's the Clemson Tigers taking on the 5 seed Duke Blue Devils. The Blue Devils have got to slow down. I know there's not going to be any way to stop Jerron Blossom game. They've got to somehow contain Jerron Blossom game. Last night, uh, the NC State certainly couldn't do it when he had those 22 points. Jerron's a very outgoing young man, explosive athlete. He's a guy that we found out about pretty early on in the process. We got him to campus, spent some time with he and his family, and I think we got ahead on a lot of people in that situation, and we got it done and got him committed really before most of the other people had, had spent a lot of time on him. I was a freshman. I was ready to get to campus. I was ready to contribute, ready to help the team win. But during a workout with my AAU coach, me and him were working out at Norcross High School in, in Gwinnett County in Georgia. We're training, preparing for my time here at Clemson, and toward the end of the workout, he wanted me to drill around some cones, go up for a dunk test to finish the workout. I did that, and then as soon as I jumped, snap. Compound fracture on my left tibia. The exact same injury as Kevin Ware. Bone came out the skin the same way, leg was hanging the same way. It felt like somebody grabbed me from behind and like, threw me on the ground. I remember like falling on my side and holding my leg up. What made it really hard for me is, you know, I thought to myself, you know, would I ever be able to play basketball again? Really difficult time for Jerron. He handled it extremely well. The coaches were very loyal, telling me to stay calm, everything's going to be okay. And they put me in contact with their athletic trainer immediately, just like explained to him the injury and my, my history. When he came to Clemson, obviously couldn't, couldn't do much, tried as hard as he could to stay involved. And he's a very positive guy, but really had to do a lot of things on his own, a lot of rehab and just time by himself with doctors and, and trainers. He never let it get him down, though. 
came here my freshman year, and I found I had to have a second surgery because it didn't heal properly. They went to my hip and took bone marrow and then placed it at the site of the break. He feels things in his heart, and then he just works for it. Things happen in life, and you have to be able to bounce back and persevere through adversity. My work, I think, helped propel my game to the next level. Each year, my statistics show that I haven't stopped working. The hard work that I've put in to get here and the hard work that I've put in to be successful is really something that I take pride in. No matter what people tell you, no matter what happens, just believe in your abilities and what you can do. 11th meeting all time between Clemson and Duke in the ACC tournament. And away we go. The handoff to Kennard. Missed an early three. Rebound Blossom game. And the ball is intercepted and back the other way for a two-hand jam goes Frank Jackson. Heads up play oh. by Frank Jackson. Tigers look all out of sorts offensively. Three turnovers and they're 0 for 1. Send it off for Kennard Stray and he it. Jackson splits defenders, falls down. Stolen Blossom game. Lobs it ahead to Thomas. Thomas had it poked away. JB comes up with it and punches it home right to the rim. Showing a lot of guts so far. 3.37 left in the first half. Big pocket by Gabe DeVoe. One on nobody. Goes to the rim. Two and it's up. A rim rocker for Gabe. Reed up the left sideline. Tigers down by 13. Reed gets to the rim. Blows by everybody. Plays it in left of the rim. Tigers within 8. 62 54. Right side to Mitchell. Mitchell tries another three. That one's good as well. Shelton Mitchell, three for three from the outside today for the Tigers. Screen to his right. Splits defenders. Drives inside. Muscles it up. Count it the foul. Marquis Screen has 12. The Tigers within two. A big possession right here. Maybe the possession of the game. Looking. Kennard comes out from under. Takes it. He's going to take it down. Back inside into a double team. Up and over them and into the basket. The Blue Devils. Get a big win here this afternoon, taking a 79-72 victory. We have four really good scorers. You know, he and Jason can really score the ball, but Frank can score, and so can Grayson. And if we ever get all four of them going, that's who I would like to be. Just to get a win um, against a good team is huge, but, you know, for us, you know, it's it's a it's a process playing back to back days. Um, it can be tough. I'm proud of the way that that we handle things, and um, we're ready to move on. I'm very proud of myself, considering you know the injury I went through. You know, it's not something that's easy to come back from. You know, um, I'm just thankful for everybody that you know helped get me over the hump. Not many players in Clemson history have been uh, all ACC back to back seasons, and so I think that's the true testament and, and shows how how hard I really worked to put myself in this position I am right now. throw a long pass into front court. It's deflected, and now Greg McClinton will throw it from 80 feet. That's he made it! He made it! Wake Forest won four straight before meeting Virginia Tech. In the first half, the Demon Deacons were hitting shots from everywhere. But the Hokies controlled the second half. We've had multiple reps of playing in one and two possession games. It has to be a fight. It can't be pretty. It has to be kind of grimy. That's where we're most comfortable, but also that's probably where we're most effective. And the Hokies have their revenge win against Wake Forest. The Hokies claim it tonight, 99-90. This is what it's going to feel like the next time we play and we don't do the things necessary to give ourselves a chance to have success. Their schedule is tight, but the Hurricanes still have time for a tour of the city by a local. Most people think of the city as Manhattan. There are actually five boroughs. We're now crossing from Brooklyn into Manhattan in what is called New York City. We're on Canal Street. It's where I had my first job in college. And right now, we're going to be entering Chinatown and you can see the, the dragons. Welcome to New York City, everybody. <laughs> ACC tournament, high noon. But Kamari Murphy has been preparing for this his whole life. 
first couple memories that I have growing up in Brooklyn are just being a neighborhood kid, playing in the park on concrete. You playing like you're playing on a wooden floor. You fall, you get right back up. New York basketball is just hard and it was tough. I will always carry Brooklyn no matter where I go. No! One, two, three. Yeah. The Tar Heels get their fans excited with aggressive and physical play. Toughness is on their side, not on our side. We got to be a lot tougher physically and mentally. Hey, come on, guys, let's go. Step behind, and um, they were bringing it to us. Kind of came back the end of the first half. Um, second half came out, they kept attacking. Your defense has to keep them out of the paint. If they can get the ball near the basket and and post a guy up who's you know within two feet. They're going to score. If they get a lob to a guy cut to the basket off a back screen, they're going to score. They executed better uh, at both ends of the court, and, and we didn't play as well. Every team comes here to win, but North Carolina brings the best record in the conference. Miami is disappointed that their tournament is over, but proud of what they accomplished this year. I think this was a wonderful ending for me. Um, coming back to my hometown, see my family and play in front of my uncles and, and friends back home that couldn't get to Miami or, or a game this year, I think that was a wonderful thing. Would have been even more exciting if we would have won a championship, but uh, we got the NCAA tournament coming up, so I'm satisfied with this. It's easy to think the Blue Devils' run will end against Louisville. The Cardinals are the higher seed. And forward Dang Adele is a scoring machine. But this is a chess match between two great coaches. And one king will fall. so proud of the win because we beat a heck of a team and a team that could win it all, really. We're very disappointed we lost this game. We thought we were, we were a better basketball team. We were hoping to win this tournament, and um, they wound up being the better basketball team. It's a big-time win for us. Uh, hopefully, we have some gas in the tank here you know, as we push on. Have a great show. Game time in the ACC men's tournament. The players aren't the only ones working the floor. Nice. Leonard Hamilton's next, guys. Take seven, ready six. Take six, ready five. See, that's why Take they five, ready 12. Time. Take 12. Michael Ojo, the seven-footer, jumping for Florida State. Take one. And Go he up. controlled the tip. OK, here we go. for two. Ojo shook my hand for the game. It was like me shaking my two-year-old 12, hand. Florida State bench, just how big it is. You should see the size yep, difference. Yep, yep. It is yep. unbelievable when you're on the court. A man masquerading as a mountain, I would say Michael Ojo. <laughs> or a mountain masquerading as a man. Yeah. I'm a big man to paint, you know? That's my house, and I own the paint. Coming down there, you're gonna have some trouble with me. Ojo is 7'1", 304 pounds. Michael is a unique physical specimen. He has a physique that most people would love to have. Hard working, tough, all the things you want, he has. Hey, go, Ojo. 
You either go left hand jump hook or a turnaround on this side of the middle. Mix it up. Oh. You got to dislodge people to get your shot up in this game. I'm so thankful for the opportunity. You know, there's a lot of kids back home that will do anything, you know, just to have that chance to come over here and play basketball, go to school for free. Michael Ojo is over seven feet tall with size 22 shoes. When he arrived at Florida State, he still could not find footwear that fit. Got here, so I was wearing size 18 or 19, and, you know, and my feet it was hurt. And I talked to Coach, he was like, hey, we'll do something. And he made sure he talked to the right people, get Nike to make me a custom-made shoe now that, that I wear comfortably. The time they made the shoes for us, Michael Ojo had the only pair of custom-made tennis shoes from the ground up that Nike made for anyone in basketball. There's a machine in China that does nothing but make Ojo's shoes for us. Ojo's shoes are big, but his personality is even bigger. Thank you so much. He's one of the most popular guys on campus. One of my buddies on campus, he's a PhD student. How you doing, man? Thank you. Thank you. What up, skinny boy? Michael could run for student body president and probably could win by a landslide. He's so appreciative of everything that goes on. They do a good job, you know, keep everywhere clean for us. Yeah. They work so hard every day, make sure we have something to eat. He's just nice and gracious and patient with any and everybody. You got to have defense? Yeah, you got to have defense. Probably. I like the fact that you made the first one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yes, yeah. yes. I remember when he first got here, the first thing he said to me, he said, my mother just told me she wanted me to be a good boy. He never fails to take time with any and everybody. Hey, my brother. Yes, sir. Can you help me with something to eat? Uh, food? Yeah. Oh, you can have right there? I don't have no money on me. Oh, really? Uh-huh. Let me see if I have a little. I just, I just want to get me something to eat. Thank you, my brother. I need that, my brother. All right. I'll come to see you, Thank please. you. Please do. To be a student athlete is not just for the sport. You have other responsibilities as well. Yeah? You have to be a good role model. Try to give back to the people, you know, pass it on, pass it forward to others. I'm so thankful for the privilege to be on this team, to be, to be part of this team, you know, just to be part of this society, this environment, these people, this family, the Seminole family. I'm a Seminole forever. This has been my home, away from home now. Always come back, always. He's a gracious person and extremely appreciative for the opportunities that he's had since he's been here. That's how he's represented his family, our school, our program. He might have came here as a good boy, but he's, he's leaving as a good man. The number two seed now with a three-point lead. Isaac for three. Yes, baby! Ah, there you go! Seven-point lead, Allen, deep three. Controlled by Florida State. Isaac throws the home run. Man, the dunk off the feed from her tan mix. And Florida State's going to hold on to advance to the semis of the ADC tournament for the first time since 2012. We're very pleased to be moving on to the second round. This is a very, very important game for our players. We have a very close knit team, a lot of camaraderie, a lot of togetherness. And uh, I feel like these guys are going to give it all they have. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, oh. Virginia here to start this second half has missed on all five of their shots. Guy crossbook pass stolen by Fluger. Fluger goes all the way in for the reverse oh. two-handed double pump jam. I, I'm speechless. These guys are playing their best basketball all year right now. I'm so proud of our group. This nucleus have played in big games in the ACC and the NCAA tournament. They really feel it's their time. Notre Dame guarded us hard. They, they were ready. You could see it. They were looking forward to playing us. And um, we've got to find ways to just keep battling. Duke and it's Carolina in New York, the biggest college basketball rivalry in the nation. You couldn't want anything more. You look at the bracket, you see that possibility for a Duke Carolina matchup down the road and your eyes kind of light up, especially New York on a Friday night, prime time. This is kind of a holiday. 
Williams back as the head coach of Carolina for 14 years. Mike Krzyzewski in his 37th year as the head coach at Duke. North Carolina is the top seed in the ACC tournament. Carolina, by virtue of being the higher seed, they will wear the home jerseys and we're underway here in Brooklyn. Talent like Barry, Meeks, and Jackson can beat any team, any time. Right away, North Carolina looking to go inside. That's a matchup that North Carolina can and should go after. steal by Jackson gets it to go and North Carolina is gonna hang 50 on Duke in this first half round three living up to the height Let's see if Jackson tries to drive it. the three got it Allen is open for a three and buries it Pinson on Allen. Allen gets the switch. Launches again, and he's got three threes already in this game. Couple of stops, couple of baskets, and this game takes on a completely different tenor. Duke fans getting louder and louder with each passing possession right now. Pinson rejected. Jefferson coming over to help. Tatum. Momentum. Duke. Kennard knocks one down and has a chance for a four-point play. Kennard to a slashing Jackson who makes it a two-point game. Timeout, Carolina. Allen the kick to Jackson. First lead of the night for the Blue Devils. Now a rejection. Giles from Allen. A 20. Swing here in the second half from 13 down to up seven for the Blue Devils. 51 points here in the second half. A heck of a win for the Duke Blue Devils as they move on to the championship game tomorrow night. Frustration probably more than anything is the biggest emotion I think you have. Things are going okay. Second half, you don't play well. And so that part is frustrating, but you got to congratulate Duke. They uh, made plays, made free throws, did all those things that we did not do. You know, a team like North Carolina, who is extremely talented, pushes the ball up and down the court, uh, they just come after you, and so it was a fight, and we really had to fight to get that win. Whatever we're down, 10, 12, 13, whatever it is, we know we can come back because we can get hot. As I've been coming off the bench during this tournament, my job when I get in there is just give them some energy and uh, just be shot out of a cannon in there and give us some life. I love how close they've become and how tough they've become, not just individually, but collectively. And the Louisville team and North Carolina, uh, I mean, they're final four teams. So, you know, you don't win without being tough together. So the Irish in their green uniforms, Florida State in their gold uniforms. The winner goes to the ACC championship game. it up and in. Everybody that's played for the Fighting Irish, I believe, has scored. Brilliant defensive play. Ryan from the corner. Another Notre Dame three. They're 11th of the night. And there's the 13th three of the night for the Irish. Florida State has none. 0 for 7. For the second time in three years, Notre Dame is going to the ACC championship game. I'm so proud of our group. We have been so mentally prepared and focused to play up here. And to have a chance to play for another ACC championship, it's a little overwhelming right now. We feel good in this building. Our guys feel it's our destiny to win in Brooklyn. They talked about it all winter. Fifteen teams came to New York with a dream. Now, that dream is alive for just two. 
Good evening, everybody, and welcome to the Barclays Center in Brooklyn, New York, for tonight's 2017 ACC Championship game between the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame and the Blue Devils of Duke. fire burns as hot as ever, even as the Duke Blue Devils chase their 20th conference championship. But they will have to beat the Notre Dame Fighting Irish. the lane here in the first couple of minutes. Tied by Jefferson. Hooker on the left side. Good. He has four points. Duke taking control here early. Control. Duke takes it early. Notre Dame wants it back. Knocks it down. Jefferson. Dared him to take it. Top of the key for three. Got it. The Irish have knocked down two straight threes now. But Mike Shashevsky is calm. His roster is not intimidated by a scoring surge. And confidence enables aggressive defense. So Jason Tatum plays solid defense there. The blue levels take it away. Jackson out inside, back outside for a three. Off the rim and a step back home by Tatum. He jammed it right through. Crowd of Duke fans loves it. But one young man looms large. And head coach Mike Bray knows it. Notre Dame forward Bonzi Colson can take over any game, even against the best teams in the conference. Up top now, Colson. He drives. The runner in the lane is good! Bonzi Colson with his own version of the Euro step. What a spin move! He got around Jefferson, laid it up and in. Carroll throws it into Colson. He rolls. He gets fouled. He lays it up and in! The Irish are within three! And Colson's going to the wall! And a lovely reaction there from Colson, kind of flexing and screaming, getting this crowd fired up. Duke must press hard to overcome the fight of the Irish. One small mistake quickly means disaster. This pass is stolen by Colson. Colson goes up strong, puts it up and in, and we are tied! Allen has the ball taken by Colson. Oh. He misses, but there is Beecham to stop it home. Irish right now are in the midst of a 10-2 run. Let's go, Irish! Let's go, Irish! Top of the key, Colson, 4-3. 53 46, Notre Dame by seven. Wow! Dude, we're winning this game. ACT champions. Composure. Perseverance. The victor tonight will take the best shots from their opponent and continue to play their best. Win four games in four days, you know, first team in the ACC to ever do this was incredible. We battled through so much, and we did struggle, but we've stayed together. That's what it's all about. Throws it through into the floor for a dunk for Tatum and a foul on top of that. And that will do it. The Blue Devils win it. The Blue Devils win it. 75 69. They are Atlantic Coast Conference Tournament champions, and they. The Betty is flying.
It was another great win playing against another great team. That's what you get with the ACC. No team has ever won four games in four days to conquer the ACC. And Duke did it in the face of a performance for the ages. That's one of the great performances in a championship game in the history of this league. To do what he did, he was kind of willing us to the thing and couldn't be prouder of him. You got to give Duke credit. They made big plays and big shots, as they've had the last three nights to win. You know, you don't win something like this without being tough together. It's a journey that I've never been on, and obviously no ACC team has ever been on, but not just to win four games, but the caliber of opponent. The Louisville team and North Carolina, Notre Dame, these are great college basketball teams. To win this, beating those teams is uh, amazing.